Today we're making a soy reduction, affectionately nicknamed by my children, the magic sauce. With the sauce, I feel like Mary Poppins. The tiniest drizzle turns any protein grain or vegetable into their favorite meal. And yes, it works on grown-ups too. <laughs> there is no need to attend Hogwarts to give this a try. It's a classic Japanese technique that I learned from the amazing cook, teacher, and writer Elizabeth Andel. You can get this and many other wonderful Japanese recipes in Elizabeth's Washaku cookbook. Here is my version of the sauce. All the ingredients will be going into my pot, set on a scale. I'll reset the scale to zero before each ingredient so that there is no math involved. This way, I don't have to wash a gazillion measuring cups. But if you don't have a scale, you can measure by volume since this recipe is very forgiving. In case you're not comfortable with Japanese pantry standards, let me do a quick ingredient show and tell. Our main ingredient is soy sauce. Tamari is a widely available brand of Japanese-style soy sauce in the US. I prefer to buy a low-sodium type since we'll be reducing it. Our next ingredient is sake. Ask your wine store for inexpensive sake to use in cooking. You can keep leftovers in the fridge and use within a few months. Mirin is a sweet rice wine that you can get in any supermarket. If you're Japanese, I have to apologize for calling this mirin. It's not the real thing, but that's as close as we can get in the US. Some water and sugar, plain white granulated. Now the tricky ones that might require a trip to a Japanese grocery store. Kombu is a type of seaweed called kelp in English. We need five grams of it. If you don't have a scale, just eyeball two pieces that look like this some dry shiitake mushrooms. And the most important ingredient that will give our sauce the smoky flavor, bonito flakes. Bonito is tuna's little cousin. In Japan, it's smoked and dried and shaved into flakes of various thickness. If you hate fish, don't let this deter you from making the sauce. It will be smoky, but not at all fishy. I prefer to use the thick bonito flakes because of their addictive, complex aroma. Whoa! Unfortunately, these are as easy to buy in the US as Cuban cigars. My stash is from a friend of a friend who was visiting from Tokyo. If you live in a country where you can buy these, use about 25 grams and add them to your soy sauce before you start to cook it. An alternative that's easily available in the US is Bonito Flakes that are tissue paper thin. You can buy them in any Japanese grocery store. I prefer to buy them in small packets to keep them fresh. You'll need 10 grams for this sauce, which is two packets. To avoid off flavors, it's best to add these thin flakes for just a few minutes after your sauce is already reduced. The show and tell is over and we can get to work. Stir to dissolve the sugar and submerge the mushrooms. Let the sauce sit at room temperature for about an hour until kombu is reconstituted, but the longer, the better. Set your pot over high heat and bring to a boil. Reduce the heat so that the mixture doesn't bubble out of the pot, which would be disastrously messy, and cook until it becomes syrupy. How long this takes depends on many factors, but mine took about 40 minutes. To test it, I put a few drops on a plate and pop it in the freezer for exactly one minute. When you hold the plate vertically, the sauce should drip very slowly. Stir in your bonito flakes and let the sauce sit for three minutes. Strain through a fine mesh strainer, pressing hard on solids with a ladle. Cool till warm and transfer to a squeeze bottle. Cool to room temperature, cover and refrigerate for up to a year. This amount usually lasts me for months. For more addictive condiments illegal in some states, don't forget to subscribe to Helen's Kitchen channel. And if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.